and welcome back to the fourth video in this series and while recording this course I realized that there is room for one more video we are preparing a major update with a new feature for Edge One, which should come very shortly so you can expect a new video somewhere down the road so this video number four is for anyone that feels he or she has mastered the previous modules and the previous videos I would really recommend to first get a good grasp on what we have discussed previously before you jump into what we're going to talk now because now we're going to into the more advanced concept and the goal of this video is to help you improve trade expression so we want to optimize our reward to risk ratio which means bigger winning trades smaller losing trades and we want to do that improving our exits and stops then we're also going to take a deep dive into performance metrics I realized I talked about performance metrics in the last video but that then didn't go further we will do that now then we're also going to take a deep dive into the important edge wrong performance events and I will show you how to create a journaling and review routine based on that so the focus points now in edge wrong and for exit analysis first is we're going to take a look at updraw drawdown highest and lowest price inputs and I've recently recorded a new video on our YouTube channel which I will insert now let me show you our improved exit analysis in Edgewonk and how you can gain completely new insights for your trading. So first of all, when you go to your journal and when you enter a trade, you have your regular input fields such as stop loss and take profit. You can see in this case, we have a buy trade where we entered at 200. Our stop loss is at 175. Our take profit is at 250 and our exit price is at 250, which corresponds to our take profit. Then under advanced trade data, we have two fields for highest and the lowest price. Those are generally the highest and the lowest price values that you have observed during the duration of the trade. I will show you in a moment how you could use it in another way. But let's stick to the default approach first. So the highest price that we have observed is 250, which corresponds to our exit price and also to take profit, which makes sense. The lowest price is 195, which is just barely below our entry and not too close to our stop loss. So now we can go to our exit analysis graph under chart lab. You find it here under exit analysis. And this is the trade and we are visualizing the trade here in different ways. First of all, we have the green area, which is called the updraw. And this measures how close has the price come towards your take profit. And you can see this is the take profit line at 100%. And you can see the updraw is at 100%, which means that the price during the duration of the trade moved 100% in your favor, which makes sense since it's moved into your take profit. The drawdown, the red area, measures how close has the price come towards your stop loss. In this case, the drawdown is minus 20%. You can see if the red bar would have been here at minus 100, it would mean that the price hit your stop loss during the duration of the trade. But in this case, we can see the price just barely moved against us. Then we have the black marker. This shows you the exit of the trade. And you can see the exit is at 100%, which means that the exit is right at the take profit and also at the higher of the highest price. So over time, if you have entered many trades using the highest and the lowest price, stop loss and take profit, you will get a good understanding of your trading performance and also the price performance of your trades. If you see, for example, that the updraw is not able to come close to your take profit on average, it could mean that your take profit is maybe set a little bit too far. And that could help you improve your take profit to realize more winning trades by just playing around with your take profit approach. If, for example, you would see that the black marker is somewhere different, so we can go back to our journal, we open the trade, and let's assume our entry price is not at the take profit, but slightly lower at 225. We save that, we go back to our exit analysis, and now the black marker, when it updates, will be lower and you can see it's only at 50% which means that your exit is much lower than your take profit but also much lower than the highest observed price. So at that point it seems like you made a mistake by closing the trade a little bit too early and you're not realizing the full potential of the trade. If you see that repeatedly it can also show you flaws in your trade management and on the other hand if you see that on average your take profit would have been hit by the highest price it could give you more confidence in staying in winning trades longer so that's also a good way of using this by the way if you have questions about a trade you can just hover over here at the bar and you can see when in the pop-up it shows trade and then the number of the trade you could enter the trade ID here at the top and then in the journal you will be able to see exactly that trade if, on the other hand, you will see that on average your drawdown is very small and very low, it doesn't even come close to the stop loss, it means that your stop loss might be set a little bit too far away and you're too conservative with the stop loss. This means that by using a slightly smaller and tighter stop loss, 
you could potentially improve your reward to risk ratio because if you have a smaller stop loss or a closer stop loss but keep the target the same your reward to risk ratio will improve and you can gain very important insights into your trading let me show you a different approach that some traders are choosing we can go back to our journal and we reopen the trade under advanced trade data for the highest and lowest price, you could choose to enter the highest and the lowest price a slightly different way. So instead of marking the highest price and the lowest price during the duration of the trade, you could wait and follow the price after you have closed your trade. For example, if you're a day trader, you could wait until the end of the day and then note the highest price that you could observe during the end of the day. If you're a swing trader, for example, you could note the highest price at the end of the week or at the end of the month. However, the most important thing is that you keep it consistent, that you always use the same approach for how you analyze and note the highest and the lowest price. So now what happens if we change the highest price to, let's say 275, which is above our exit price and above our take profit. This means that after we have closed the trade, the price would have kept going in our favor and moved further into profits, but we didn't capitalize on it. So let's save the trade. Then we go back to our chart lab. We go back to exit analysis. And now you can see that what happens is that the updraw is much higher. The updraw is at 150%, which means that the price overshot your take profit, but you can still see the exit the black marker is at the same area because we exited the trade at the same price at our target at 250 at 100%. So if you follow this approach and what you see is that the updraw generally is above your take profit, it could mean that you could extend your take profit and that maybe currently you're a little bit too conservative with your target. And by extending your take profit, you could potentially realize bigger winning trades. And those are very, very important insights that will help you improve your trading, your trade expression with the exit analysis tool in Edgewonk. So you should have a good understanding of the exit analysis graph tool now. And let me show you something else. For example, in trade analytics, we have some columns. If you scroll to the right, where you can also see the average updraw and the average drawdown. So you can analyze the drawdown and the updraw in different ways utilizing the trade analytics. For traders who don't use targets and stops in their trading, we also have the MAE and the MFE. And the MAE is kind of similar to the drawdown. It shows you in points how much has the price moved against you. The MFE shows you how much has the price moved in your favor. And this is unrelated to the target and the stop loss. It just shows you based on the highest and the lowest price, how much did the price move in your favor and against you. Next, let's talk about the performance metrics first. And I will also put a link in the video description to our FAQ where I further explained all the different performance metrics, the formulas and the applications. So if you want to know more, check out the link in the video description to our FAQ. So expectancy is first and probably the metric that most of the traders are already familiar with. It tells you the per trade value. And what we do is we have the total profit over all of your trades and then we divide it by the number of trades. So let's assume we have a total profit in your trading journal of 1000 US dollar and you have taken 10 trades to realize that. So we take 1000 divided by 10 and we get 100. So on average per trade, each trade is valued at 100 US dollar. How do you use that? First of all, you want to make sure that your expectancy is positive. If you see a negative expectancy, that's not a good sign because it means on average, you're going to lose money taking those trades. Also, you want to look for outliers, especially negative outliers, as I've shown you. In your trading journal, the best way to analyze expectancy is in the trade analytics. And here we have dedicated a column for expectancy. And then you can add your different ordering criteria. By the way, you can go many levels deep, for example, setups and then weekdays. And then once we break it out and once we show all the different layers, you can see and get a very deep understanding and breakdown of your expectancy and all the other metrics. And again, look for outliers, especially very large negative outliers. Also, if you see that there's a very low expectancy close to zero, that means that per trade, you're not making a lot of money. And also you could analyze that and look for the cause. Next is the profit factor, which is also quite popular. And the formula is very simple. We have the average win and divided by the average loss. And generally speaking, the profit factor should be greater than one, except for traders with very high win rate systems. So what does it mean? For example, let's assume you have an average winning trade of 100 US dollar and your average losing trade is 50 US dollar. 100 divided by 50 is two. So in this case, you can see your winners are twice the size as your losses. 
if for example let's assume you have an average win of 50 and your average loss is 100 the profit factor would be 0 0.5 in that case it's smaller than one which means that the average loss is larger than the average win this doesn't have to be necessarily bad however it does need further investigation if you have a low win rate system and a profit factor smaller than one then most likely you're looking at a losing trading system in edge wonk when we go to the chart lab and then go to performance ratio we have the profit factor here and you can follow the profit factor development over time which is very important that you can see how has the profit factor improved or gotten worse over time and that's a very important understanding for you as a trader you can see here this is the one area in that case we are mostly above one which means that the winning trades are larger than the losing trades which is a good first starting point however we would always recommend analyzing performance and judging your performance not based on just one factor or one criteria but in combination with other ones as we will show you in a moment under monthly reports we also have a column for profit factor and then you can very nicely follow your profit factor development over time month after month or if you break it down then you can even get a profit factor week after week and you can see how is the profit factor developing over time which is also very helpful for a trade review process next is the sharp ratio which although it is quite common we don't recommend using it the formula is we have the return of all trades and then we have the standard deviation of all returns. What happens is that the sharp ratio penalizes large winning trades, which is obviously not good. If you have a trading system and you have a large winning trade, it doesn't mean that the system is bad or getting worse but the sharp ratio will make it look that way. So we don't recommend using the sharp ratio and instead use the Sortino ratio, which is an improved version of the sharp ratio because you can see we have the return of all trades, which is also here in the sharp ratio, but here we divide it by the standard deviations of only the losing trades. And this means that only large losses are penalized. Large winning trades are not making the Sortino ratio worse. So we would recommend using the Sortino ratio over the sharp ratio. And again, in Edgewonk, you find it in the performance ratios. In the dropdown, you can then go to a sharp ratio or a Sortino ratio. You have the development over time. By the way, you can always use all the different tabs and all the different filters here at the top to drill down even further. And also in the trade analytics, when you move a little bit to the right, you will see that you have all the different ratios here sortino sharp karma sqn gain to pain which we're going to come to now the karma ratio is a very interesting metric it's also a risk metric but we are now looking at the return in terms of drawdown so large drawdowns will lower the karma ratio which is a very interesting approach because it tells us the return that we have realized how much drawdown did we experience and if we have large drawdowns, it means that the trading system is less favorable. If you have two karma ratios and one karma ratio is higher, it could mean that the drawdown is much lower, which in general is preferred. By the way, one interesting thing you can do in the chart lab when you go to compare charts, you can display two charts side by side. And what we can do here is also have our performance ratios. And we could say, okay, we want to compare the karma ratio versus another performance ratio. Let's assume the profit factor. And then you can do that or for example you could analyze it in a completely different light for example you can compare it to your efficiency and see how does efficiency and ratios correlate and, and do you see a relationship between performance ratios and efficiency which means the quality of your trading gain to pain is also a quite a popular risk metric and what we have here is we have the return of all trades and we divide it by the return of the losing trades so what happens here is that the gain to pain penalizes the higher risk by dividing through losses so the more risk you are taking which is displayed in the return of your losing trades as well the lower the gain to pain ratio is you'll find it in all the same places in your edge journal and then finally we have the sqn which is the system quality number and the system quality number is based on that formula but what is more important is the way to interpret it and we put here the table it's also in the faq so if you want to analyze your sqn you can do it here based on the different scales in Edgewonk, we have a completely dedicated SQN chart lab here, and there we have the SQN by setup. So if in your Edgewonk journal you have different setups, different strategies, and you tag your trades, you can then very nicely compare your different trades based on the different SQNs. Of course, all the different filters apply, and you can very nicely compare the different SQNs and setups. 
So we have obviously learned quite a bit and you have seen that Edgewonk is very extensive and we provide so many different analytic tools, metrics and things that will help you understand your trading in a much better way. However, if you want to get the most out of Edgewonk, we would recommend to establish somewhat of a routine and a repeatable process. And what you could do is define 5, 10, 15 criteria in your Edgewonk journal and then at the end of the day or at the beginning of your new trading day or at the end of your trading week, you can go through all of the points and step by step compare and see what is going on in your trading. Such a repeatable approach can be very, very helpful. And here we have a few ideas that you could use for your inspiration to create such a process. If you are already doing something like that, and if you have a favorite event or a metric that you are always consulting in your Edgewonk, let us know in the video comments below. And it would be great if you could share your insights and your approach to also help out the other Edgewonk users. So what we can do is, first of all, we can go to our equity graph and we look at the relation to the moving average. So in our chart lab, we go to equity graph. And then what we can do is we, under options, you can turn on the 20 or the 50 period moving average. And what you generally don't want to see is your equity graph, the green one, dipping below your moving average. This means that now you have experienced more losses and more severe losses than what you have done in the past. If you get back above the moving average, that's a good sign because it shows you that recently you have made a good amount of winning trades and won a good amount back. So that could be a first step for your check. Next, I would always recommend to consult your tilt meter and also the efficiency. This is just so important to see for your last five to 10 trades, how is the tilt meter behaving? If, for example, you would see you have a lot of red tilt meters, it means that you have problems in your discipline and your recent trading doesn't show a great quality. Also, you could see that in your efficiency. If you see dips in the efficiency, it tells you the same. Also, if you see extended losing streaks, that could also be a major heads up because losing streaks could lead to a lot of issues. For example, some traders may get more fearful after a losing streak and they're not ready to take trades even though the trades are in line with their trading plans. Or other traders may increase the risk because they want to make back the losses much quicker. In Edgewonk, what we have is the calendar and the calendar visualizes your trading day in performance. A green day means you have made money on that day, a red day means you have lost on that day, and a gray day means you had a break-even day. If you wanna get a more detailed breakdown, you can click on the title, the month, and here you get a deeper breakdown and see how many trades you have taken on that day and what the total PL for that day is. Overperforming setups is also very interesting. You wanna see if a certain setup is really performing well, and then you can use that in different ways. For example, you can try to see if you can use the setup in other ways to get more trades, maybe on a lower time frame, maybe on more markets. And generally, it would be also interesting to ask, why is the setup currently performing so well? What are the favorable market conditions that really is benefiting my performance? So for that, we could go to your chart lab and then we can go performance by setup and then we break down the different setups here and give you a visual representation. And of course, you can also go to the trade analytics. I've shown you this trade setups ordering criteria and then you get the breakdown here with all of your different strategies and setups and you can analyze them further. But also not only overperforming but also underperforming parts are very important. For example, comments and tags. You generally want to know always where you're losing the most so that you can either avoid that or look into ways on how you can improve that. So in chart lab, we can go to the custom statistic and here we visualize the different custom statistics. You can jump around and then generally you want to look for outliers, but also you want to see what is really working well for your trading, what's making a big impact so that you can do more of that. Besides the custom statistics, you can also go to trade comments and here you have your entry, exit and trade management comments, which we also visualize. Drawdown peaks are very important to understand where are you currently with regards to drawdowns. So in chart lab, we do have a graph for that, of course, drawdown here and the drawdown visualizes how far away are you from your account peak. So you can see the largest drawdown that we experienced was 10.3%. Currently, we are trading at a drawdown of 1%. So we are very close to our current top. We can go to our equity graph and then we should be able to see that. We are very close currently to the top of the account and this would have been here our biggest drawdown where we also dip below the moving average here. I talked about outliers. You generally want to look uh, for outliers in expectancy, but also in single outliers. And we can do that, for example, in your journal. 
we could go to the journal and here we have a column for the gain in percentage and you could look for very large negative outliers especially on losing trades you really want to see where are the really big outliers for example here we have a minus seven percent loss this definitely needs to be addressed because you can see normally our losses are half a percent, 1.3 percent, 1.3 percent, but 7 percent definitely is out of the norm. We could also go to the R distribution field and here what we can see is that we break down the winners and the losses based on R multiple intervals. And generally what you want to see is that most of your losses should be in the area between minus 1 and 0 because minus 1 means that your loss hit your stop loss and that should be the cutoff point. If you see like here this trader has losses that exceed minus one, minus one, even greater than minus five. This means that you are letting your losses run beyond your stop loss, which generally speaking is not a good sign. Holding time analysis can also be very interesting to analyze. So in the chart lab, we go to a holding time and what you can sometimes see is that for traders with a long holding time, so when you go more to the right, sometimes the holding time will have clusters here in the downside, which means in this area which means that trades with a long holding time have a large losing amount. And this could mean that traders have issues holding trades for a long time. If you're a day trader, you want to adjust that and make sure that you analyze holding time in hours. But the same thing applies in general. Always when you see outliers, especially on your losing trades, the red ones that needs to be addressed. For example, this trade, this is probably the one where you lost 7%. You really need to look into this. Again, you have the trade idea. 230010 you could enter this here 230010 you click uh, click on search and then the trade pops up and then you can see okay this was the trade uh, we lost $900 that's the trade with minus 7% we definitely need to address this trade and what has happened because such a trade can easily erase a whole week of trading profits also i've shown you before we want to be very aware of our performance metrics and especially the development over time and the best way to do that, to follow it over time, is to go to the performance ratio tab and then just see the development over time. What you can also do to get a better understanding of the recent development to also avoid scaling issues, you could say you only want to look at the last 10 trades, for example. And then also you want to see if you're slacking in journaling activity, which means that not all the trades have been journaled or maybe you have not journaled all the trades completely so that is also a sign that something is wrong when the trader is not able to keep up to date with his journal and not have the quality of journaling then very often it will also lead eventually to a decrease in performance so beware of that and then this could be turned into a repeatable process using a checklist for example you could use your notes or you could use sessions and there every week or every month go through all of the different checklist points and then enter your answers. Did you do that? Do you see an improvement? Do you see a decrease? And so have a repeatable process. This will also help you save so much time and also make your journaling more consistent. If you already know what exactly you're looking for, and then you can always compare it week after week and be more aware of what is going on in your trading, you can catch potential issues much faster and hopefully course correct.